transliterates as EY or EI. So we have two dots with the yod A, three dots with the yod A. So now let's do a lamin. Lay, lay. These say I, but transliterate as AI. Okay? And so it'll be a dash with the yod or the little T with the yod. So I, I. I. Let's do a noon. Nai, nai. All right, these are oi, and they transliterate as oi, or sometimes you'll see oi. Okay, and so any letter in Hebrew with the o and then the yod, oi, and then kaf, koi. <laughs> and there you go, koi. All right, and then of course, to remind you of the gutturals, we have Aleph, He, Chet, Ein, and Resh. The Shva, you can go over the page of the Shva rules, all the different reasons and ways. And <laughs> you don't really need to know all of that. You just need to, once you're sitting there trying to break down a word, that's when that comes into play. But for the normal average, you don't need to know. Okay, the next part is your page two in your student pages. It's Genesis 1, 1 through 5, and we're going to read some more. Okay, so we're going to start on the right-hand side of the Hebrew column of letters. So the very first letter, yes. bet, right? Nope. And so it says b, and then we have a shva. So that is that a silent one, or is that a little short e? Short e, right? So it's bet, bet. All right, and that is a prefix, right? So uh, the very first word of your Bible is actually begins with a prefix. And that means in, and the shva makes it say implied a. So in a something, okay? The rest of the word, the next letter is a resh. So if you can roll your tongue, if you can't, just fake it until you make it. <laughs> Flip it, okay? So the two dots say what? Eh. So we have be re. Be re. All right, the Aleph, is there a vowel? Nope, so it's silent. But you have to put it in there if you're writing the word. <laughs> okay, the next letter is a sheen, and so SH sound, shh. Now the next vowel is what? <laughs> the dot with the yod that was up there. Remember? The long E sound, E, okay? And the last letter is a tav, which is a T sound, okay? T. So, be, re, Sheep. Remember with the T's we don't spit but a sheep. <laughs> right? It's but a sheep. But a sheep. Okay? That is in a beginning or just in beginning. Okay? The next letter or the next word is bet. And we have the ah, the little T voweling, right? So ba. What's the next one? Ra. Right? Ra. And then the Aleph at the end makes no sound, but it has to be there. If you took it off, it would be bar, which would be sun. Right? It would be a different word. So you have to leave it there. And that has to do with roots. That's grammar class. And this is not a grammar class. <laughs> okay. So, bara sheep, bara. Okay? So already, first part, you've read in beginning God. Okay. Actually, you haven't read God yet. Hold on. <laughs> in beginning, created. <laughs> okay, now this is the word for God that we're going to learn today. So we have an olive. It's silent. makes no sound of its own. But it's at the beginning of a word, so it's voweled. And you have the five dots, which say what? Yeah. 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 You have a lamed, which is the L sound. And remember, it's not, you can't even fake it. It's l. <laughs> <laughs> le. It's not le. It's Ooh. Okay, Ooh. and then we have the O, so ELO, ELO, and then we have a HEY, which is the H sound, with the dot and the YO together says what? E, long E, and then that's a closed mem, it's M, so ELOHIM, ELOHIM, okay? All right, and then today's, I think it's the next two words. Yep, next two words. Okay, this is my nemesis. Okay, we have the word et, the lovely word et that will become your favorite. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 
So the first letter is Aleph. Makes no sound of its own, but it's voweled. The two dots, yeah. Yeah. F, and then it ends with a top. So, et, et, et. no spinning, et, et. Okay? All right, and et, we'll get to that in a minute. Hold on. <laughs> okay, it's actually, this, this here actually is technically attached to the next word, so it kind of goes together. Okay, so the next letter of the word is actually a prefix that means the. Okay, so you have the H sound and the ah voweling. So you have, it goes et, ha. And that whole thing is kind of attached. Okay, and then the next letter is a sheen. That's the SH sound with the ah. So ha, sha, ha, sha. A mem, ma. So ha, sha, ma. And then this one is a yod with the dot, so it's just yi. Okay, so the yod in this word is not a vowel like it is over here in Elohim. It's a yod with a vowel. Okay, so it's yi, and then the mem, the closed mem. So ha sha ma yi ha sha ma yi ha sha ma yi. Okay, and so in beginning created, Elohim is the word God, and we're going to talk about that more in a minute. Et, we're going to skip that for a minute. <laughs> ha is the Shamayim. Okay, and what's, let's take off the Sha and just Mayim for those that know. What's Mayim? Water. Water, okay. Water, there's, I forget the name, there's like a technical name, but there's a bunch of words in Hebrew that are always plural. Because think about it, water is water molecules. Yeah. It's water. We don't say waters. Hey, hand me my waters. We should, though, because it's, it's waters. It's not one water. It's a bunch of waters. And the Hebrew reflects that. It's a plural. So mayim is plural. Um, Question. Yes. Ha, breath of God. Mm -hmm. Is that the, in the heavens the water is the breath of God? Yeah, it's how he created everything okay. with his breath. So, mayim. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so the waters, which that's what, so now it has shamayim because it's the heavens. Now, what are the heavens made of? Like literally our sky, what's it made of? Clouds. Rain. Rain. Right? Right? Yeah. It's all water. So the waters. Now, some translations, I know it's not the King James, it's the other ones, like maybe NIV or something. Anyways, one of, so there's other translations out there in the Bible that say the heaven and the earth, and those are wrong. Right here in the Hebrew, you see for yourself, it's heavens, plural, and the earth. So. And I've heard them say. I know. My kids were in Bible drill, you know, remember? And uh, EJ was memorizing it, and it, he said, the heaven. I said, what? No. <laughs> better get on. I'm not King James only, but we are today. Get it out. Because it's a Okay. So now you can read the first five words of your Bible <laughs> in Hebrew. Okay, so it, here we go. All right, let's talk about Elohim first. So this is on your notes, in your um, notes and vocabulary. For week three, we're in Gamel and Dalit. All right, so Elohim. So Elohim is normally a plural form of the singular El for God. Okay, so if I ask you what the word in Hebrew is for God, your answer should be El. Okay? Now, this can be, now, this is the problem. In Hebrew, there are no capitals. Or lower, there's not capitals in lowercase like we have in English. And we like to take it upon ourselves, literally, to just capitalize things. When we want to put emphasis on it or make it, we say it's a proper name when it's not really. Right. We'll just capitalize stuff. Okay, so like you'll be reading along in your Bible, and there'll be like a capital L for Lord. And you're like, wait, what? Or a capital spirit. And then sometimes it's not. You're like, what's going on here? There's reasons behind it. Okay? So... L can be, let's say I was teaching a class on the gods that the Chaldeans worshipped, right? And I say, we're going to talk about the god and then say his name. If I'm speaking all in Hebrew, I'm saying L. The god that they worship, right? The L that they worship. I'm not talking about capital G, <laughs> God, right? I'm talking about this false God, the statue that they worship or whatever. So, But it's the same word in Hebrew. There's no capitals. <laughs> okay? 
So Elohim can also mean God's. So im is the masculine plural of words in Hebrew. Okay, so I'm saying El is God. Elohim is like us putting an S on the end of God. So we would never do that for God, right? But then if I'm saying the gods that they worshipped, right? They worship multiple gods. So if I'm writing it, I put little g, o, d, little s, right? Gods. But in English, that's Elohim. It's the same word, okay? So if you look at the beginning of your Bible, you're like, in beginning, gods, right? No, <laughs> not in this verse, <laughs> okay? There'll be other places. All right, so today we will talk about if I, if I was saying, today we will talk about the pagan gods of the Canaanites. It can mean God's little ds, as in... Oh, nice! Okay, um, it also means God's little g, Elohim, little e, right? As in judges or counsel. So if I said the judges of Israel, I could say the Elohim of Israel. It's the same word. Okay. So it sounds weird to us in English yeah. because we completely like, you know, we change forms and we ask this and we do all this stuff. But in Hebrew, it's the same thing. You have to know by context what they're talking about. Okay, Council of Adonai. And then I give you all the different references in Scripture where that is. Or the Jerusalem Council and the Messianic Writings. So what we call the New Testament, we actually call the Messianic Writings. And in there, this is one of my pet peeves, is that we call the... It should be called the Jerusalem Council. We say the Sanhedrin, right? That is the Roman word for those people. God's word is the Jerusalem Council, the 70 that he set up to rule over Israel. Okay? Jerusalem Council. And so the, our word that we use, Sanhedrin, that is a Roman word that they called them. They're like, you know, that Sanhedrin, those Jewish men over there. Yeah. That, yeah. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like derogatory, and we take it on and use it and sound smart. <laughs> okay. But in Genesis 1-1, we have a special situation. In this first verse, the word Elohim is plural, but the rest of the sentence is singular. So that's your clue. Our Bible is written in Hebrew poetry, and Hebrew poetry will be written in, like, strange ways. Like sometimes, okay, if you know Hebrew, um, the adjective comes after. So like we say the good boy, they'll say the boy good. Well, sometimes there'll be a passage of scripture where it'll say the good boy. Because if you're in, in the Hebrew mindset, that's that's weird. That'd be like us reading something in English that said the boy good. <laughs> We're like, wait, what's, it makes you pay attention, right? So the Hebrew Bible has all kinds of things like this to catch your attention and make you pay attention. And so Elohim is plural. Well, in Hebrew, the entire sentence must match the subject. So if the subject is masculine plural, the rest of the sentence must be, especially describing the person, right, should be masculine and plural. But it's not. The entire sentence is singular. So that's a, wow. a catch, a, a pay attention. Whoa, something's yeah. going on here. Yeah. And that's because it's talking about somebody special, not God's little the g, God. yeah. little s, right? Yeah. It's talking about the God. Yeah. So this is not the norm in Hebrew, as the subject, verbs, and adjectives must all match in gender and number. Our Bible is written in Hebrew poetry. And one of the many things used in Scripture to draw our attention to something important is to make it stand out or a change in the grammatical structure. And so we miss these because we don't know Hebrew. We're reading along, we're like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we often miss these in English. In Hebraic mindset, when you want to speak of something being great, big, supreme, you use the plural ending for it. Hmm. So we like to add more words. They don't add more words, they change the ending and make it plural to make it the big, the best, the great, okay? So, just here in this verse, Elohim is pointing out the fact that Adonai is the great, supreme creator, judge of all creation, because they pluralized it, right? Is Elohim not used anywhere else in the scripture? Yes, mm -hmm. hit for him, for his name. Okay. Yes, but the, the reason why I'm honing in on this scripture, 
I have personally witnessed Christians trying to witness to a Jew and using this scripture. And he's like, you're an idiot. (laughs) Because this is not talking about plural. Because they're saying, oh, look, you should Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit all in one create it. Now, you know, and they look stupid. He's like, that's not what that means. It means... (laughs) So, yeah. So there are other places where God is called Elohim, <laughs> but in this verse that I'm teaching you now, there is a reason specifically why. Okay. It says there are other places to see the Son and the Holy Spirit with the Father, but this is not the place. Mm-hmm. So this word Elohim is pointing to Adonai, the God, the Judge, the Creator of all. Okay. Talking about Him. All right. Also, L, God, okay? So if I, if I ask you, it's on your going to be on your vocabulary. So if I say L, your answer is God, okay? Um, Eloheinu, our God. So uh, nu, N-U, is a Hebrew suffix for our. So Elo, right? And then there's an ending attached, nu, which is our God. Elo hi, the I ending, and I'm not saying like it technically is I, <laughs> but it's more AI. Yeah, it's AI. Yeah, AI is the ending for my. So, um, like I said last week, Avi is my father, mm-hmm. right? Or the E. Avi. Yeah, in that situation, it's just the I. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's mostly the I, but then they'll add the A depending on the. It, it's like Adonai. Right. Is my yes, Lord. AI. Yeah. Adonai is my Lord. You're saying my Lord, my master. Okay, so that AI ending, sometimes just I, is my. All right, so L is God, singular. Elohim can mean God, judge, creator of all, pointing to the big G, right? Or it can be little G's <laughs> with an S, right? Okay? Or Eloheinu. I'm saying our God collectively, our God, big G, right? And then Elohai, my God, big G. Okay. Also, this is in page eight in the book. So if you need to look this up some more, <laughs> page eight in your book. Okay, in your actual book, I think I'm saying. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. I do not know everything. Is she recording this? Darn. I'm just kidding. She just got her recorded. I don't know everything. Okay. Et is my nemesis. <laughs> I've been studying Hebrew for going on eight years, and I still technically do not understand it. So I'm going to try <laughs> to help you understand that a little bit. If you ever figure it out, come teach me. <laughs> okay, so et is untranslatable. So in your Bible... You have Barashit, Bara, Elohim, Et, Hashemayim. In English, we have in the beginning, you've seen in your Bible, in the beginning, God created, there's no Et. There's nothing for Et. Ha, the heavens. You see that? So it's literally. Can I give you my version? No. Yes, go ahead. Wait, did Uh, you study? No, I'm just kidding. It says Barashit, Bara, Et. And then it's to heaven. Ha Shemayim, yeah. Right. But the way I read that is in the beginning created God, the Hebrew alphabet. Mm-hmm. Because, to create the universe. Because right. how did he create anybody? With he the spoke universe. it. Right. Because if he wouldn't have created the language, he couldn't have spoken it. Right. That's just. It's true. I mean, yeah, I see that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in our English Bible, it is completely left out. They just skip over it. Mm. We have no English equivalent to et. What's the translation for, what's the Hebrew word for and there? Ve. Ve, okay. Ve's attached. Well, I'm a little bit, to I was et. confused. You know, in Latin, yeah. et is and. Right. The vet, I'm sorry, the vav is attached to the second et. Okay. So the vav, gotcha. literally in English, is standing on its own. Even though in Hebrew it's attached to it because it's untranslatable. There's no English equivalent, so they'd literally just skip it. There's no equivalent in any other language? No. Greek? Arabic, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. But 
But anyways, okay, so et is a direct object indicator linking the verb to the object. Et adds no particular meaning to the sentence. <laughs> Nevertheless, it is grammatically necessary. You cannot leave it out. I have a million papers with a red X <laughs> left out the et. Anyways, I still don't understand all of it, but the simplest way for me to explain it is it's your finger. And I know that sounds funny, but it's the only way that I can seem to understand it. Okay, so if I said, hand me the book. You're like, which book? There's a million books lying around, which one, right? But if I said, hand me the book, you see what I'm saying? There's a visual indicator linking <laughs> you to what I'm talking about specifically. So God created the heavens and the earth. There's no questions. This is like these heavens over here. This is this earth. You know, no questions. This heavens and this earth. See, it's your finger. <laughs> That's the only way out of eight years <laughs> that I've been able to figure this out. And I literally, I'm telling you, I've gone to Israelis, native speakers, people who are fluent, live in the land, not originally speak Hebrew, and gone to them and I say, Teach me about et, and they literally just laugh in my face. <laughs> they said, you don't get it. I'm not getting it. <laughs> I'm not getting it. I get it. Do you know what I'm saying? But I'm not getting it enough to be able to teach it to you, much less really understand it. You know what it. it is, but you can't tell us what it is. Right. That and literally with my sabra, with my mora, I would write sentences. She, she would tell me to create these sentences, and I would write the sentences, and she would say, you left out et. Okay, so I'd go back and I'd create new sentences and I'd put in it and she said, that didn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, and I still, I graduated, but not because I learned that. So you know that it's pointing to something, but you don't know when you're supposed to use Specifically, it. Specifically, like there's times, I, I'm, I'm going to sit down one day, I'm glad you said that, I'm going to sit down one day and go through all my sentences that I had and like get out why and what and how and figure out the why I leave it out and what she meant here. Yeah. I'm but then I'm there's the deeper meaning. meaning. I know. Okay, so so basically, for right now, in Hebrew preschool, <laughs> it's your finger, right? So if I said, he went to the store. I didn't tell you which store. You know, I mean, which store? I mean, maybe you knew he was supposed to go to Walmart. <laughs> so that was the story. With, but if I said, he went to the store, right, then you know, obviously, I'm pointing in the direction. So it's a helper to help you link the subject to the object, right? Yeah, the linking. And we don't need it in English. We just say the. Yeah. But they have to have this extra et ha. The, the problem that comes up with, I'll leave it out, when there's sentences where, we have them in English, where it's like implied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's those things that trip me up because it's like, do you need it? Do you not need it? And so I'll put it in, and she's like, you don't need it. And then I won't put it in, she's like, you needed it. <laughs> so I don't know. Okay. All right, so you Question. learn it, you teach me. What? Punctuation in here. There's no punctuation, no punctuation in here. The punctuation is the, that punctuation is because it's English. That's what I was going to Yes, in a Hebrew okay. Bible. There's no punctuation. Yeah, we'll go over that one day. We do cover it. Um, they'll, for a period, it looks like a colon. And then there's pays and sonics. There's for ending paragraphs. Okay. Yeah, so there is punctuation, but it's not normal like ours. No periods and stuff. All right. So the finger <laughs> is helping me to tell I mean a specific thing, book, whatever, which I exactly mean for you to hand to me. So that's the only way I can understand it at all. Okay. Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It has two forms. We have the print. We have the cursive. Did anybody practice yes. writing? Mm -hmm. yes. Your alphabet. Okay. All right. Um, Aleph in itself makes no sound. When it's at the beginning of a word. She's, she's laughing. Did you practice? Yeah, you said last year. Last year! <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay. It's going to be pretty 
sad when you have to go tell people you failed Hebrew. Okay. For the second time. I'm not up there with failing kindergarten. Okay. So. It's falling forward. So Olive makes no sound of its own. And what do we use to remember the rules of Olive? What do we use to remember the rules of Olive? A man named Rabbi Yeshua. <laughs> was oh, at the beginning, in the, oh, the beginning of his ministry, God gave him a oh, message. Yes. He was vocal right at the end of his ministry. He, was he stood silent before his accusers, and that's like Olive. At the beginning or middle of a word, it'll be vowed. At the very end, it'll be silent because it has to be there. That's one of the things I thought I got last week, but apparently did not. <laughs> <Really>? no. <laughs> Alright, so Aleph, when we transliterate it into English, we use an apostrophe. Okay? Its numerical value? A one. A chat, a one. Right? It physically represents, and you can cheat. This is on page 10, I think, in your student pages. A lot. What is it? A lot. Oh, yes. I thought you were answering me page number 11. <laughs> Page 11. In your student papers. Okay, so physically represents an ox, spiritually, Father, Father, Father. and we equate that to God the Father. God the Father. Okay? All right. Um, why doesn't the alphabet begin with. No, the al Okay, why doesn't the Bible begin with Aleph? It begins with Beth. Right, so we have better sheet. The very first word of your Bible. If Aleph is the first letter, why didn't our Bible start with Aleph? Because God the Father already existed and he's silent. And he created his son, the Bet, who created all things were created by him, through him, and are held together by the Son. Right? So yeah. God, Aleph, is silent, and he's out here, yeah. and he created his son, Bet, who then created the rest. Okay, and that's the Aleph in the top. <laughs> okay. Next letter has two forms. This form is Bet, Bet and this one is Bet. Bet. Um, this print and cursive, we have B, transliterates into English as a B, and this one is V, transliterates as a V. Numerical value for both Stein, Stein, which is two. All right, it physically represents house, house spiritually, a son. a son, and we equate that to Yeshua. Yeshua, God's son. This is our first prefix when it's attached to a word that already exists. And here's a word that already exists. What? In, at, or by. With. Close. In, on, with. at, with, by. Yes. Yeah. He said or, and I was like, wait, is he saying that or? <laughs> okay. So, in, on, at, with, and by. Whoops. <laughs> and what does the schwa imply? A. Okay. So, in, a, whatever. On, a, whatever. At, a whatever with a whatever by a whatever. Okay? The A is implied you don't need it in Hebrew. In English, if we're translating the sentence, we have to add in the A. Okay? All right. Today's letters, woohoo, are brought to you by. No, I'm just kidding. All right, this one is called Gimel. Gimel. Gimel says G, transliterates as a G, numerical value. Shalosh. All right, so you write, now, Aleph and Bet and Vet have been really wide letters. They take up like the whole space. Gimel is our first skinny letter. Technically, it looks like a Vav to begin with, with a foot sticking out. <laughs> it's like he's walking, okay? And that, there's something in the book about that too. Okay, and then in cursive, <laughs> I remember how to write it this way by um, a C with a little top. Okay, and there's a reason why you're gonna see later why you have to remember which way it is. And I used to get it wrong a lot. 
I always had look. I still, to this day, like my brain, I know which way it goes, but my I still write it the other way for some but reason. But when you think of that, camel. what camel and C. I know, and I do, but then I still write it the other way. I don't know. It's like I'm the Hebrew You used the other one, the backwards one. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's a different letter. Yes. I know. But it's still I, just. I just write it the other way, and I think I wrote a Gamel. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, Hebrew dyslexic. Okay. So, um, this letter says G, transliterates to a G. It physically represents? The camel. Camel. You're like, what? <laughs> because Gamal in Hebrew is camel. And now, this works, watch. So physically, camel, spiritually, you should answer me as burden bearer, okay? Now, what is today our burden bearer? Well, no, today, our car. We don't have camels. Right back then, they used camels. They loaded it up with all the crap, and they brought it home. Right? The letter looks like the burden strap to the camel. There you go. So we load up our car. <laughs> And we bring it all home, right? So it's our burden bearer. Okay, so that's so we have, you know, you kind of got to go physical goes together, spiritual goes. You're like, what burden bearer? Yeah, because it's our car. <laughs> okay, but we equate this burden bearer to the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we have the Father, we have the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit, three in one. So there are places to see the three in one together. Genesis one one, Elohim is not the place. <laughs> okay. Um, Gimel is not a prefix, so don't worry about that. Okay, next letter. Dalit. So this literally is a delet. A delet. Dalit is the name of the letter. This is a delet. Okay? All right, so this is, it says D, transliterates as a D, numerical value. Arba. Arba. Physically represents? Door. Spiritually Close the door, door of your heart. So this is the spiritual state of every person. Okay. So we have the Father, we have the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. Three in one. They come together and they knock on the closed door of your heart. Everyone is presented with this. Some point in your life. So some people open the door, right? And they have a relationship. Some people say, uh -uh. <coughs> I ain't answering that door. I'm going to go sow my wild oats. I'm going to live my life. And then later on, you know, I'll settle down. <laughs> yeah. And then some, yeah, if they, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, but this is basically what I'm teaching you here is the gospel of God. This is the, we like to say the salvation message, right? Everybody has presented this. Knocks on the closed door of your heart. That is the spiritual state of everyone, right? And if you open it, the rest of the story continues. But there's some people that are still sitting here. Still. Right? <laughs> okay. So, physical door, spiritual closed door of your heart. Now, um, this is reminiscent of Revelation 3.20. Um, knocking on a closed door. Now, a lot of people will use that scripture thinking it's talking to the unsaved. But if you actually go study it out, it's not. Yeshua is standing at the door of believers who have locked him out because they're too lazy and they don't want to go harvest. They don't want to go work. The church literally has locked the doors and won't let Yeshua in. And people, they literally use that scripture all the time on unsaved people. No, he's not. <laughs> believers. They're too lazy to get off their butt and get to work. And so, yeah, go study that out. Whew. Okay. So, that's our letters for today.